This talk is called B2B SaaS Startup, a cautionary tale, a tale you will almost certainly ignore. So you have a strong founding team. They're pretty well connected after some successful exits. And your product has early traction. And that infuses your company with more outside money. And that's when things get interesting. Because you've got to grow. We all know how it works. Everything has to grow. Your new VC also has connections. How do they do that? which leads to reference deals. And all this causes the dreaded hydra, the stimulant, the bad trip, premature scaling. And like the insidious beast it is, fire shoots out of its eyes. You've got to rapidly grow a sales team. You go wide as you target everyone because your TAM is huge. You move quickly. You hire a bunch of new engineers. It's always difficult to hire them. In the confusion, you sign some bad deals. I mean, it's always been you selling. You can't scale charm, really. You take a couple sales-driven requests. And with that, all hell breaks loose. As mentioned, your rapidly growing sales team, they're putting the key in it. They go for it. They target broadly. They start taking feature requests. I thought only VPs could do that, or founders. The value prop is a shotgun blast, and this leads to distractions, which causes parallel tracks, which eventually causes engineering to slow down. But wait, I thought it was the bugs that was slowing them down, or playing foosball all day. Well, we'll get to that. Let's take another route. As we slow down, we start selling on the roadmap which creates constraints. Marketing does what they do best. They start generating buzz to take up the slack. We delight our customers. Groove is in the heart. And this creates an even broader product. It's like a platform or something for your whole business, which creates an even more diffuse value proposition. Hello, long lost friend. Remember premature selling and bad deals, price erosion, you will remember the next day. You'll remember exactly what the coffee tasted like because it's time to go after the enterprises to boost that average price point and grow, which causes distractions. And we know the rest of that story because anytime you move fast, you're going to get bugs which lowers morale and confidence, and slows engineering down, which is something you can sometimes save with customer support or customer success heroics. But customer support and success are getting nailed. They've got to support Enron, they've got to on-ramp GT, and they've got to take care of those bad sushi lunch size deals that you signed early on. It's easy to blame engineering. I mean, we just need to execute on the plan, right? Well, they're losing morale. It's no fun cutting so many corners, which causes you to lose key people, which then causes more bugs. Remember those early customers? Those early adopters, they're like, what the fuck? We believed in you guys. They're underwhelmed, which causes churn. Or you can renew them on a roadmap promise, which causes constraints and then parallel tracks the long and winding road. So here we are. I won't bore you with this. You can download the PDF. You can put it next to the Nespresso next time you're at the water cooler. What can you do about all this? I honestly think the only thing you can do is get a third party who isn't giving you money, who's not gambling on you, who isn't like a major label who bets on 20 artists so they can get that one hit single. Have you validated your growth engine? how this thing will actually work. Can you prove that to maybe your most skeptical friend who's not taking sides and is not biased? This is your last chance because after this, there is no turning back.